Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. In this video we are going to talk about how to name short oligopeptides. What are oligopeptides? Take a look. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 amino acid residues. So this oligopeptide consists of 9 amino acid residues. If we would have more than 10, we would call such molecule polypeptide. If less than 10 amino acid residues, then we call oligopeptide. And each oligopeptide has its own unique name. One variant would be to give three letter abbreviation for each amino acid. This is one variant how we name. This is just going to be a short version of the full names of each amino acid. For example, A RG stands for the arginine and PRO stands for the proline and so on. If we would use computer programs, these names would be even shorter. We are going to use one letter abbreviation which specify each amino acid and the sequence is going to be the sequence of the amino acid in such oligopeptide. Each polypeptide or each oligopeptide has N terminus and C terminus. Each polypeptide or oligopeptide so starts with N terminus and ends with the C terminus. So this is going to be the first amino acid in amino acid chain, second, third, and this is going to be the last one. By the way, the sequence is not random and represent a sequence of the human hormone bradykinin, which regulates blood pressure. Because it consists of nine amino acid residues, we can call this nonapeptide. And here is another example we call dipeptide. But take a look. Even in dipeptide, we can have, for example, for the first amino acid, 20 variants. Because we have 20 amino acids. So 20 for the first position. And for the second position, we also have a choice of 20 amino acids. So 20 times 20 is going to be 400 variants uh, of the dipeptides. And with each amino acid in oligopeptide or polypeptide chain, number of variants would grow tremendously. For example, with three peptide, we are going to have 8,000 different variants. And when we work with databases, for example, in bioinformatics, these three letter abbreviations would be substituted with one letter abbreviations to save a computer time to do different calculations, for example, protein folding. So arginine, one letter abbreviation is going to be R. Why not A? Because there are a number of amino acids that start with A and A uh, would be for alanine and not arginine. So we have to take second letter. Next amino acid is proline. And with proline, we just take first letter. So next letter abbreviation. One letter abbreviation is going to be P. Next also proline. So also P. Glycine is going to be G. And phenylalanine is going to be F, serine is going to be S, one letter abbreviation, proline is going to be P, one letter abbreviation, phenylalanine is going to be F, and arginine is going to be R. So this is going to be one letter abbreviation of this polypeptide or oligopeptide. Now let's take a look at this dipeptide. What is this amino acid? This is alanine. So this R group specify which amino acid it is. And this is going to be just a backbone, which is the same in each amino acid. So let's write down the name of the first amino acid in this dipeptide. And this is going to be alanine. So alanine. And the second is going to be serine. So this is going to be serine. Serine. 
As I said earlier, the names of peptides reflect the names of the amino acid residues involved in the amide linkages and amide linkages is the same as peptide linkages and beginning at the N terminus and ending with C terminus. All except the last are given the ill suffix of acyl groups. For example, if we take a look here, this is alanine, so the name would change to alanil. Alanil, and because this amino acid is going to be the last one, its name is not going to be changed. So alanil serine would be the name of this molecule. Not this one, but this one is going to be correct name of this dipeptide. So we just remove the suffix here and change to this one in all amino acid residues except the last one. And also we do not use any spaces in the name of this dipeptide for example. It's going to be one word without any spaces in between. So what would be the name of this molecule? Take a look. Arginine would be arginyl. Next would be proline and it's going to be prolyl. And again prolyl and glycine would be glycyl. So glycyl and next phenylalanine is going to be phenylalanil and serine would be changed to cereal, so cereal. Next proline would be changed to prolyl and phenylalanine would be changed to phenylalanil and as you remember the last one doesn't change so arginine would be just arginine because it is the last amino acid in this um, oligopeptide chain. So the name of this molecule would be again without any spaces in between arginyl, prolyl, prolyl, glycyl, phenylalanyl, cereal, prolyl, phenylalanyl, arginine. So according to nomenclature some proteins may have very long names which would contain more than 1 million letters. And of course we do not memorize them by their full names but instead using 3 letter abbreviation or 1 letter abbreviation which even uh, shorter or for short oligopeptides again up to 10 amino acid residues we can use these names. I hope now you would be able to understand that suffix would change in all amino acid except the last one and you would be able easily to read names of the dipeptides, tripeptides, tetrapeptides and so on. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.